All right. Ready, but not sing. Have you seen the status before? You just started with cross-plane and finding troubleshooting and monitoring a bit challenging? Hi, my name is Christina Andonov, and I'm a solutions architect at AWS, where I guide organizations how to run cross-plane in production at scale. And today, I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step how to get started with troubleshooting and monitoring. And you'll know exactly what to do when you see this again. With that, let's dive in. Let's say your developers happily deploy applications to Kubernetes, and now they come to you, the platform team, and ask to have the same level of control when it comes to the state of, the, uh, of their applications. They want to store state in DynamoDB, which is Amazon's NoSQL fully managed database. And you, the platform team, say no problem. You set up cross-plane and you provide them with that functionality. Now, we're not quite done yet here because the application still needs to talk to DynamoDB. And of course, you can add that into cross-plane. So now developers can create their databases. The application has access to the database and everything goes smoothly. And couple of weeks pass by and the development team comes to you and say, hey, um, my database now is getting some traffic and I'm trying to change the billing mode and it's not going through. I'm trying to change the billing mode from on demand to provision, but the change is not propagating. Please help me out. So the thing is, you're not the one who set this up. Your teammate did, and she's on vacation this week. But you can still figure this out. And the first thing you're going to probably do is not look at this claim, but go check the cross-plane logs. And chances are you're not going to find much useful information there. So you're going to come back here to the claim, and you're going to check what the claim is doing. What's the status of the claim? And of course, it's synced, but not ready. So uh, just to mention here, I have a uh, alias for kubectl. So K is short for kubectl. Whenever you see it, that's what it means. So uh, something is off with the status. So we're going to run a describe on it to see, to try to find out what, what's going on. When you run a describe, what you're looking for is uh, the events. And they're not shown here because there was nothing in the events. So then if there's nothing in the events, you go and you see what is this claim creating? In this case, it is creating an XR, a composite resource. So we're going to get the status of this composite resource and it's synced, but not ready. So we're going to describe it, look in the events, nothing in the events. What is it creating? It is creating three resources. We're going to get the first one. We're going to check the status. It is sync, but not ready. We're going to describe it. There's nothing in the events. It is creating yet another resource. We're going to check on that resource. Status is off. We are going to run a describe on it. And finally, we get our error. That was a lot of kubectl commands. Not only that, but what if the problem wasn't all the way up here? What if it was all the way down here? How many more commands would that be? Not only that, but you had to keep a mind map of all of this. That's also a lot of cognitive load. There must be a better way, right? The better way is to have a dashboard that would dynamically create this mapping and give us the status of each resource. So today, I'm going to show you two open source dashboards that can do that. The first one is Comoplane. Comoplane is an open source project that is relatively brand new. It came out about three months ago. And I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing with Comoplane that we just did 
with kubectl. So I have a little video embedded here in my slides. I'm not switching to demo or anything. So I'm just going to click through the not ready statuses of those resources. And finally, I'll navigate into the table. And once we uh, the table loads, we're going to go to status, and you're going to see the exact same error. The next dashboard I'm going to show you is Argo CD. If you're already using Argo CD for your applications, you just need to add a custom configuration that will recognize these cross-plane resources and run the health check on them. And then you can pinpoint right away that something's off with the table. And when you navigate into the table, you can see that exact same error. So now let's take a closer look at the error. It says if billing mode is set to provisioned, read capacity and write capacity must be at least one. Well, if you were to bubble up that error to that development team that came to you in the first place, maybe they could have just added read capacity and write capacity and fixed the problem themselves. Well, possibly they should have let you know anyways, just so you can set some defaults in that claim so the second team around doesn't run into that. But the point here is if they have access to that dashboard, even though you are abstracting the infrastructure, they can still self-service when it comes to some uh, unexpected errors. All right, let's take a little step back and review what we learned so far. Well, you did learn how to troubleshoot composite resources, claims, and nested composite resources, manage resources with kubectl. And that might be a great option for some simpler use cases. But when it comes to more complex claims that create nested XRs and a lot of resources, the better way is to visualize them with a dashboard, such as comma plane, or Argo CD. All right, so now we have one development team creating one database. But what if we had more? What if we had eight? What if we have 32 or more and we cannot even fit them in this on this dashboard anymore, let alone see any of this? Well, we need some observability. And today we're going to talk about the first pillar of observability, which is metrics. Crossplane, like everything else in Kubernetes, emits Prometheus metrics. So we can just create them with Prometheus and visualize them in Grafana. And sometimes Prometheus would just, you just install it and it would scrape those metrics. You don't have to do anything. And we have enable out to complete here so we can search for some of those metrics. But the thing is, we don't know what the metrics are. We don't even know what to search for. For the record, I did try cross-plane, nothing came up, but it, might, but it might as well not be cross-plane. We don't know what the metrics are. So let's grab two of those pods and try to examine them and see if we can find what those metrics are. So let's find the first one. And when we list the YAML, the first thing we see is uh -huh. there's a port called metrics so that's very very promising the second pod however the cross plane pod uh, doesn't have that port by default it doesn't expose it so we have to make sure we enable metrics in the helm chart and then it shows the port okay so now we have the ports and we know where the metrics are and if we were to port forward into that port and then in the browser navigate to the port forward slash metrics, we do see some metrics. So remember here we're looking for the prefixes of those metrics. Not the we don't need to worry at this point what the metrics are. We just want to make sure they go into Prometheus and we know what to search for in, in Prometheus. So let's grab one of those prefixes and put it in Prometheus and we did not get lucky this time around. <clears throat> Prometheus did not scrape these metrics by default. All right, so we have to do some hard work here. We're going to go check the Prometheus configuration. And to scrape this pod, we're going to use a pod monitor. So we're going to check 
what pod monitors does Prometheus pick? And in this case, it picks pod monitors that are labeled with a specific label. So we could create a pod monitor with that label, point it to the cross-plane system namespace, and give it that metrics port that we found a little earlier. And voila, we have the metrics in Prometheus. So I don't know if you caught that, but we didn't get the metrics for this one pod only. We got the metrics for all of the pods in that namespace. OK, so now we have the metrics in Prometheus. Um, the next step is to put them into Grafana so we can do something with them. Luckily, that's much easier. We just need to provide Prometheus as a data source and query it, and the metrics are there. So now let's do something with the metrics right now. Let's try to calculate um, how long does it take for databases on average to become ready. So that metric that's highlighted over here, it says resource TTR. And from the description, I can see see that TTR means time to readiness. And then I can use that underscore count and underscore sum to calculate the average. And let me show you what I'm talking about. OK, so let's say our developers have been creating databases for the past one month. That, that's when I gave them that claim. And that's when they started creating uh, DynamoDB table. So for the entire month, month, they have created 100 tables to date. And those 100 tables took 3,050 seconds, all of them together, to create. So if I were to divide the seconds by the tables, I will get that on average, it took about 30 seconds for the tables to come up. But remember, that's for the whole month. But I might want to know how long would it, it took um, like an hour ago to create a table, not what it was two weeks ago. So I can take that sum and count and split them in chunks of five minutes, which Grafana does by default, and take the rate of them and how fast they're increasing and then still do the same division. And I will get the rate every five minutes. But remember, we got all the metrics for all the pods. So I have to split them by kind. So because I have the, not only the table, but also the policy, the role, the role policy attachment in this case. Um, and here, if I click on the table, I can see that it took um, at this point in time, 31.2 seconds. And then a moment later, it was taking 44 seconds to create tables on average. OK, so let's go back and see what did you learn so far. You learned troubleshoot cross-plane with kubectl, with como plane, and with Argo CD. And then you did learn how to monitor uh, and that cross-plane emits Prometheus metrics, where to find them, what they are, how to scrape them with Prometheus, and how to visualize them with Grafana. Everything that I just showed you, you can find and reproduce with the cross-plane on EKS repo. And I challenge you. Can you set up an alert for that one DynamoDB table that took more than 40 seconds? And if you do that, I promise you, next time you see that status ready but not sync, you'll know exactly what to do. Thank you so much. And please drop your questions in the chat.